in what may be the hottest year in history, scientists have recorded radical changes to the permafrost in Antarctica. The Pandora virus, a so-called giant virus with the largest genome size ever recorded. The crabs also display increased aggression, even towards larger predators. A striking new weather anomaly has claimed many coastlines around the world. NASA is examining these clouds to figure out... We've detected large amounts of an organic composite. So far, the sample doesn't match any of the DNA records. Dear God, could someone please stop changing the bloody channel? creatures coming out of the sea on that oil rig. The president has declared a national emergency. It's obvious that what we're dealing with here is a biological weapon. As of today, we are at war. With people who keep changing the channel. I saw them walk right into the sea. Thousands of people. Thousands. The mist is gone, but the city is dead. The roads are broken. You must join one of the havens. Do not attempt to survive on your own. There we go. Welcome to Phoenix Point, everyone. I hope you got your cup of tea ready, because we're probably going to need a few, actually. <sighs> Good God, I have faint memories of this game. How long ago did we play this? Well, back when it first came out. Back when it was uh, under a... Uh, um, Epic Exclusive. Hey, Golnor, how you doing, mate? Thank you so much for the 51 months. You see, I feel that this game... I mean, should we really be fighting it? I mean, we already know that more or less everything on Earth is becoming a crab. Is the Pandora virus already here, or is this just an inevitable outcome of life? All life is crap. Also, let's see if it's going to do funky sounds when I click off. It is. That makes me sad, but okay. Right. Okay, so, so you know how this is going to go. I am going to have backseat passes visible. That means I'm not going to be able to see naming games, because there's probably going to be quite a few. I'm going to ask, before we start, Dapplings, how would you like us to handle names? We can do it on a first-come, first-served basis, which means there's already 12 na name requests today. Or, we can use Nightbot to select a random name. What do you feel like? Or I could do something else entirely, and I could just say, give Leafin a, a knife and take off his glasses and say, just randomly stab chat, and whoever you knife is the person that gets named. That would also work. Suitably random, I feel. Knife party. You have not disappointed me, chat. I personally like Nightbot, uh, even as one of the first three names that got picked. Zedkrin, that is very dapper of you. That is very dapper. <laughs> also, you may have just saved Leafin, because they just said, if you take off my glasses, I will most likely stab myself. Uh, so, there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll shelf the, uh, the Leafin knife fight idea for now. Seems there are a few kinks that still need to be worked out. All right, time for a new game then. Boom. Uh, right, we're gonna have all of the DLC on because chaos. To give you an idea of which ones I've actually played before. Ah, Splat has arrived just at the beginning. So he can see how terrible I am at this game. Marvelous. We've got an audience chat. <laughs> Watch out for drop pods. Uh, I hear that they are detrimental to the contents of one's teacup. They tend to la land with a fairly impressive thud, and followed by roar of gunfire and, and wah, etc., etc. It, it's bad for the nerves, and anything bad for the nerves is bad for the tea remaining in the teacup. So, brace yourselves. But hello, mate. How are you doing? <laughs> Got 506 crabs incoming. Well, I mean, you know, if you give them enough time, possibly. Everything is becoming crabs. What were you playing, buddy? Uh, Nemesis Distress. How did you find that? 
We are just about to begin the game, so you actually picked an amazing time to join us. I am I am not in the mood to miss any 95% shots, so uh, it's Phoenix Point tonight. Why does everything turn into crabs? That that is that is a question so vast I couldn't even begin to answer it. It's a good question though. It's just that I don't have the answer, but it, apparently they do. Everything is crabs if you give it enough time. But welcome, Raiders. We are going to be kicking it off tonight with a brand new run of uh, Phoenix Point. I haven't played this since it first came out back in ye oldie days of Epic Exclusive. Uh, we're going to be jumping in with all of the DLC. Uh, the odds of our survival were slim to begin with and now less. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit, uh, a bit interesting. We're, of course, going to be naming our soldiers after chat and i'm not the sort of person that believes in reloading because someone died we'll just be taking that uh be a legend i'm not gonna make it like intentionally we're gonna die in the first couple of, of turns sort of thing we'll probably go on veteran or hero i'm familiar with games like this but not this one certainly not all of the dlc so let's not be silly but at the same time this is effectively going to be Bronze Man, um, which means whilst I'm not going to lock myself into some sort of Iron Man one save playthrough, we'll reserve the ability to reload if a bug happens or a crash, but outside of that, it's pretty much if you die, you die. We're going to play the, t the prologue and tutorial because I have no idea. Legend has it, a veteran is enough to have all scopes taken off the rifles. What? We will see how this goes. Right, chat. I welcome Banksy Passes, but if you've got the points for it. The mist is coming fast. We need weapons, vehicles, and food. If there is anyone that can respond. Eight, three, seven, we two, listened to nine, the number stations five, every day. Yeah. I took turns with Jacob, waiting for our signal. And finally, it came. A scarab got it too. It's AI directing it to our rendezvous point. We had no news from Symes for many months. Did he send the activation codes? I was desperate to know what happened to him. The mutants were on the march again. Something was happening. If the mist was back, then it meant that the Pandora virus was mutating again, twisting the human form into new horrors. We needed to regroup, rebuild. But first, we had to get to that scarab. Okay. Got to get to a scarab, apparently. Uh, okay, standard controls for the camera. Fair enough. This is the rendezvous point. The scarab is waiting for us right over there. Uh, let's go. Move your soldiers to the highlighted tile. Very well. Let's go. That feels silly because I'm not going to be able to overwatch. Uh, you see, this is why it was silly. Enemy icons above your action bar show all spotted enemies. A red icon shows an enemy in direct line of sight of the selected soldier. Very well. Good to know. Silas, thank you very much for the five months, mate. Just wanted to say thank you so very much, Avak. I've watched you for years. Just lurking and finally able to su be supporting you like I want. All hail the mighty teacup. Indeed, all hail the mighty teacup. But, uh, and a special round of applause for you. Thank you very much. For yours is the power by which the mighty teacup remains full. Ashura Storm, thank you very much for the two gifts up. That's super kind of you. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, right, select the other soldier, tab, movement, uh, let's move to attack, tiles inside the blue area show sol uh, allow soldiers to move and shoot in the same turn, a blue shooting line will be drawn from the selected tile if the enemy can be shot from it, but that is not, um, I'm gonna do what you asked chat, oh, oh not chat, sorry, but, uh, tutorial, but, okay, you 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 have a rocular vision. You could see the future and that I would be stopped. I, I understand. 
Very well. This must be very much on rails. I honestly thought for a second, it's like, really? I've just booted up the game and there's a bug? Because I'm not going to be able to shoot from there, but okay. Uh, your movement is interrupted if you spot an enemy. This doesn't end your turn. Select a fire weapon. The health bar displays your current hit points. When targeting an enemy, the amount of damage your attack could deal is shown on the health bar. The whiter the bar, the more certain the damage will be inflicted. The shot is marked in white. It's almost guaranteed to kill the Arthron. Fire at the enemy. Uh, okay. Damage 30 times 6. 1 times 6 shred. That did look very nice. Uh, you can enter turn at any time by pressing the end turn button. Or the backspace key. Seems my camera is free whilst they're taking their turn. Good. Okay. Free aim shooting. When shooting, you can enter free aim mode for precise targeting. In free aim mode, you shoot from the soldier's point of view. This is one of the things that I love. There are lots of things to like about this. The story is one of them. It's actually quite an interesting one. And there's lots of little mechanics in this game. The way the enemies will evolve based on your playstyle. To prioritize things that worked against you. And to change things up if something didn't work. Like just throw caution to the wind and try different combinations until it finds something that works. But this is the real bit that I love. If you... Like, well, it explains that. The outer blue circle shows you where all shots will land, and the more accurate the weapon, the smaller the circle. Um, shooting at different body parts can disable them, denying enemy some abilities. So if I wanted to take out the arm and prevent it from having that pincer attack, shoot its arm off. I mean, it looks like no matter where I shoot, as long as I hit all my shots, it's going to die. So center of mass is where I'd want to aim for. But I love this idea. This is so good. You can zoom right in. If you've got a sniper weapon, it's uh, particularly useful, and you might be able to just shoot their head off or something. But um, The inner circle, I believe, is like 50% um, of the shots, and the outer circle is the... Like, there's a 100% chance that all shots will land somewhere within the dark uh, blue circle. But 50% of the shots, or there's a 50% chance of any shot landing within the more cyan circle, the inner circle. Now that you know the basics of movement and shooting, it's time to finish the mission. Be on the lookout for more hostiles. Complete the objective. My objective is evacuate all Phoenix operatives. It will have to do. Jump inside. Very well. But that is by far one of the best features of this game, in my opinion. Is that aiming? It seems that it, it's much more. Well, it's it's much less of a just rolling a dice and. Because it's less of a rolling the dice. I'm not aware if this game cheats. But I know, for example, that the the modern XCOMs do. Now, before anyone gets too offended by the idea of the game cheating, it does cheat in your favor as well. Like the modern, modern XCOM, if you miss too many shots in a row, then no matter how bad your chance of hitting a certain shot becomes, it will guarantee you'll, you'll hit it. So, there are strategies which involve intentionally missing shots, like going for awful, awful shots to build up that kind of guaranteed look. They've missed too many shots, you've got to throw them a bone. And then pulling off ridiculous shots from halfway across the map. Um, the modern XCOM cheats very, very much, but it cheats in a way to try and keep the tension there. If you're doing too well, you'll start fumbling shots, and if you're doing too poorly, you'll start hitting trick shots. You know, there's, there's give and take, but I don't really like that. Also, this is a game where if you've got a strong enough rifle, like if we had like an auto gun or so, uh, auto cannon or something, I could just shoot through that wall because I know it's on the other side. So I could just shoot at the wall in aiming mode and just go straight through it. And that is something I missed desperately from the original XCOM. I'll be right there. There. Where are you? Okay. Well, at the moment, I believe that they are largely... Uh, you're a little bit too far away for me to go for that shot. I believe that they are largely melee. This is the other thing you can do. Is I can click on it, and I can choose info. 
what are you equipped with? You're equipped with a, a pincer. Uh, it does a decent amount of damage. It requires only one action point, so if it can get, it can get close, because it has four action points. But, now this is something I didn't much like about the modern XCOMs. Traditional XCOM was time unit based. So you could take part of a turn. Whereas in modern XCOM, it was like the one, two turn. In this, you get four action points. But it preserves partially used action points. And what I mean by that is, if, oops, sorry. If we look at my movement area, this, if you look at the little bar there, I've got two action points and a partial amount of a third. I can take partial steps within my action point and attacking doesn't end the turn. So I could shoot right now. In fact, you know what? I wasn't going to. I was going to go into Overwatch, but I'll just take a shot. Apparently a pretty good shot. And I've still got, although that used up two action points, I've st I can still move because I hadn't fully used the third action point. So I can use the remainder of that to relocate for as far as my movement will allow. I don't want to do that right now, but that, uh, that uh, demonstrates how that system works. I'm ready. It's not as fine-grained as the time unit system was, but I find this quite, quite usable regardless. Yeah, you can split move within one action point. And you've got various skills that can lower the, the action point cost of weapons, specializations, and things like that. So you can end up doing quite a few. Like like I said, because that attack only takes one action point, if it could use, if it could get to you within one action point's worth of movement, it could attack you three times. So it's a very, very uh, flexible system in that regard. Hey, Bartleby, how are you doing, mate? Awesome to see you in chat, buddy. Huzzah, I did the Twitch thing and actually joined a live show. <laughs> hey, medic man, how are you doing, mate? Right, let's get... Uh, do I have Overwatch? Oh, I don't have Overwatch. Damn Dragon Blast, okay. Well, that's garbage. I just pull back then behind some cover. Okay, and turn. Now, I've taken off his pincer, so... He can only hit me with his other arm, but he can't really do anything with the pincer anymore. I'm not actually even sure if he can hit me with his other arm. I believe you can always do an unarmed attack, or at least you can bash with a weapon, and then the damage you do is based on the weapon you use to bash. But All allies and spotted enemies will appear as icons above the action bar. You can hover or click those icons to target specific characters. Okay, duly noted. Finger on the trigger. Uh, or I can go like this. Now you'll notice the the aiming reticule is much smaller here. Okay, if I tab between them, that's actually that's not just the 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 effect of perspective. That aiming reticule is larger now. That aiming reticule takes up much more of the screen. It's probably like um, two centimeters, maybe one point seven, one point eight centimeters from the two switch targets. But over here, that's a hell of a lot further than 1.7, 1.8-ish centimeters away. And that is based on your accuracy. Accuracy is a, is a stat. Um, and most people have accuracy based on their weapon or their, their equipment or their proficiencies. But because it's so much closer, we're just that much more accurate. I can guarantee right now that every shot I fire will hit its torso. It's literally impossible for any shot to miss. Because every shot will land within the outer circle, the outer reticule. And there's a 50% chance of any shot in the burst landing within the inner reticule. Because the entirety of the outer reticule is within the kind of the outline of this Arthron's torso, 100% will hit it. This one, much less likely. This one, significantly less likely. There's a 50% chance that any shot will hit it. Well, and a little bit, because I might hit the upper thigh or the shoulder, so on and so forth. But uh, we'll go for you. Uh, we may as well go for the your uh, shoulder blades. Somehow we will still miss. No, this is not XCOM. Now, here's a little trick for you. I can wait. While I'm in this mode, they're actually still, they've still got idle animations. They only pause when I zoom in. So, if there is a particular 
good point where they are in a better position for me to aim at. You can just wait until that comes through and then it'll only zoom in then. Like now. I'm more or less guaranteed to hit the pincer at this, at this point. So, although this is like, oh yeah, time is frozen. It's not really. This is an XCOM, this is YCOM. Uh, sure. Aim. That's good enough. Well, we did still miss one shot, though. One went wide over its shoulder. Do you want to entertain us? Oh, hi. Naughty. I'm gonna shoot you in the butt. Several times. Uh, at this point, you could go into Overwatch, but... I suspect that this, this is Tutorial Town. We are not gonna... That actually... Ooh. You know what? I'm gonna dial back on that. That feels like a stupid thing to say. Th this... Whilst this isn't XCOM in name, it's made by the person who made XCOM. Balls, I don't have the ability to overwatch. Never mind. We're going to charge straight forward. But if someone dies right now, totally, totally yeah. deserve it. This this is, this is XCOM in everything but name. This is more XCOM than some things that have the name XCOM. Heading out. Also, never, ever, ever do that, chat. What I just did there, I evacuated someone before I checked whether the other person could evacuate on the same turn. Meaning I could have left them behind. Uh, well, not left them behind as in the mission would end and they would be left behind, but rather they would still be there when a wave of enemies just spawned in. Would have been bad times. Always play every single uh, turn as if you're still going to have to fight another turn. Never rush. Did you ever play Phantom Doctrine, Avak? The other recent XCOM-like to have come out in the last half, half decade. If so, did you enjoy it? I did, and I did. Very much enjoyed the both. All right, I'm home. I heard most of the stream so far while I was driving. Avak, chat, please remove all low sticks from Splat's facility. Low, low, what? I am airlifting enough holy Prometheum to provide all of these unholy mutants and enlightened all those... Who, oh, right, okay, yes, low sticks. Uh, who would fall such being? <laughs> hey, unspeakable. How you doing, buddy? I do care about chat. Trombone Ninja. Also, one does wonder how you can perform your ninja duties whilst using a trombone. Um, I, hmm. Either you're exceptionally skilled... Or you rely more on the confusion of your enemies to take out your mark. Possibly. Well, Avak, have you ever seen a ninja play a trombone? No, that's how good they are. Well, good point. Very good point. Uh, I I stand corrected. Apparently, they're, they're, they are the best ninjas. Right, there we go. Our Scarab got no experience. How rude. Can Scarabs actually get experience? Oh my lord. Can our cars get experience? <gasps> this is marvellous. Also, there's a lot to digest here, but one thing to take away. Skill points. They're used to enhance your, your units to buy perks, so on and so forth. That's very much like the modern XCOMs. Experience points leads you up to your next level. This is a combined skill point pool. The whole of Phoenix, the Phoenix Point project, gets like additional overflow experience points, or not experience points, skill points, that can be used by anyone. It's a really cool system. I actually quite like that. Scarab XP meter is zero out of zero, so probably not. But Scarab was an NPC for most of that fight, so... That was a very large bit bomb, Leafy Pew. Thank you. A bribe to name the first two Leafin and Leafy After Pew. After several hours uh, traveling, the howling noises stopped. No, and then but so I will the keep the bits. I did a quick survey around our position while Jacob talked to the AI. There was an abandoned government reclamation station nearby. 
These places are usually good for scavenging supplies and equipment, but they often attracted desperate gangs. The AI gave us the reason for our stop. An emergency rescue signal from another Phoenix operative. We had a location too, right in the middle of that station. The Scarab made it clear that we should attempt a rescue before continuing with our journey. Despite That's right, no take orders from the machines. Our comrade was clearly under threat. The Scarab's missile launcher would prove very useful. We've got visual on the building. The Phoenix operative should be close by. There are hostels up ahead, so stay vigilant. Were there vehicles in this when it first came out? Because I don't remember any of this. I don't think they were. This is marvelous. Also, hateable vermin. Aw. Thank you very much for the 11 months. Yeah, nothing quite like original Brutal XCOM. I agree with that quite a lot, actually. Silas Harkonnen. Just wanted to say thank you so very much, Avik. Uh, watched a few years. Just like, oh, yeah, I read that one. But thank you again. You get two shout-outs. For no other reason than because fate. Scarab is related to HAL 3000 with the big glowing red eyes. I know, right? But it's it's good that the humans know to take orders from the machine. They understand that they can't compete with its computational power. It understands the battlefield far better than these flashbacks will. From the tutorial, you just went into the main map screen. Okay. All right, so the whole thing changed. Nice. Soldiers have four action points to use for movement, shooting and other actions each turn. Those actions can be performed in any order. Marvelous. Uh, okay, well, let me have a look, quick look at the Scarab. The Scarab is a heavily armored vehicle that can transport your soldiers. It is equipped with a powerful missile launcher. Missiles. Select Launch the Missiles from the action bar to learn about it. To learn about it? Okay. Select the target point on the Scarab's missile blast and press left click to launch. Any characters caught in the orange blast area will be injured unless they have cover from terrain. Targeting is not precise. Missiles may land away from your desired target point, especially at long range. Ah, marvelous. Uh, just what I wanted. Missiles that might not go where I tell them to go. Receiving. Great. All right. Let's have a look around. Oh, fun. Uh, lootables. What else we got? Okay. Well, I don't really want to stay out in the open, but let's move forward one oh, action point at a time. It seems that my Ready weapons have... Enable. They cost two action points to use. I can now overwatch. Thank goodness. Oh, there we are. Uh, movement action points. Soldiers can spend one AP to move a number of tiles based on their speed. The four highlighted zones show you how far a soldier could go for each AP spent on movement. Right. Area covered. Your operatives will always kneel next to low terrain to assume a low cover position, potentially blocking some incoming fire. That's my chance of doing you some serious damage. Not great, actually. Not good enough, at the very least. I could get in closer, maybe, right. but what about from here? Or even, ooh, high cover there. Uh, sure. Soldiers will stand behind walls and other tall obstacles to assume a high cover position. A soldier in high cover may sidestep to shoot and then go back into cover. Sidestepping does not cost action points. Marvelous. Come get some. Oh, that's much better. Uh, do I want to go for the head? No. Um... I cook over the body, it would drop their maximum HP by 40, and would give them 10 bleeding damage per turn. It would also drop their willpower. Hit their willpower there. Willpower is basically their courage. If they run out, they might panic. And various, well, most abilities, I think, run on willpower. If I take out a leg, they will lose their movement range. If I take out an arm, just loot hit points. But... Let me just have a quick look at something. Uh, if we have a look at this. This is an assault rifle. Re hands to use too. So if I disable an arm, they can no longer use something that requires two hands to use. They may have a backup sidearm though, or a grenade, which might make them more dangerous for me, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, you can also shoot the weapon, by the way, if you really want to just destroy potential loot. 
But that, you know, if you have no other guaranteed shot, because I don't know, they're basically a tank with legs, but their weapon is just a gun still. So, you know, you might want your sniper shooting their gun rather than their heavily fortified body. That is completely a viable strategy. I think... What is their maximum health again? 140. Eek. Well, in addition to all of the damage I'm going to do, I'll drop their maximum health by 40 points, which will make them easier to kill, but still, I kind of want to take out their arm if I can. Too many of the shots would have to hit it, though. But if I can just position it here, then there's a very good chance that most shots will hit their body. A few might clip their arm. It's very unlikely, but possible, some shots might hit the wall behind them. Oh, good. All right, not bad, not bad. Uh, at this point... There we go. Nice. Now, whenever someone dies, I believe it has a negative will impact to everyone on the team. Just kind of like regular XCOM. But I think it might have a positive will impact for anyone else. I can't remember though. Uh, let's move forward. Can you even overwatch? You cannot. So there's no point. Creep forward. Um, sure. Can it drive through things, I wonder? That's a big question. Uh, I can't get to cover from here, and I'd rather not be out in the open. So we're going to end the turn there. Uh, let's see what's going on in chat. Avak, how long does it take for a scarab to become a crab? <laughs> well, I mean, it's already much closer than humans are, so maybe not that long. I just want an XCOM style game where you're field platoons and not fire teams. Be an interesting one, Troll Potato. Uh, might be a very interesting one. Right. Let's creep forward a bit. I'm on the move. Got to rescue this soldier. Don't want to be too exposed, but I feel this wall is probably a nice one. Also, I'd be able to... Uh, I'd have no cover there, though. Give me a good vantage point, but I, I wouldn't be able to go anywhere from it. Still, let's move forward. Oh. Okay. You found the operative who sent the distress call. Friendly characters are marked with a white circle. Move a soldier inside the circle to recruit the character and take control of him. Very well. Uh, right, well. Ooh. Scarab goes where it pleases. Scarab takes no damage to go where it pleases. I approve greatly. Uh, however, I don't want to position it too far forward. Let's just draw back a little bit. Can I make it aim? Does that matter? Uh, I guess it probably wouldn't matter unless I've got, like, uh, it's in Overwatch or something. And we obviously can't go into Overwatch. Now, I know that there's nothing over here. But I don't know if there's anything going to pop its head out over there. So we're going to go. duck into this high cover here. But I want to cover some ground for now. Right. Uh, you have got enough points to go into Overwatch. The Overwatch ability allows you to fire within an area during the enemy's turn. If an enemy enters the Overwatch cone, your soldier automatically shoots. There we go. Now this is another thing I really like. You choose where they're aiming. You see the, the cone there? We can widen it. We can make it more precise and narrow. We can change the distance. Now, the thing about the distance is important. For example, right now, if I set this up like that, then anyone just creeping around the corner would trigger it. But someone just walking around this bollard would not. The cone doesn't extend infinitely. It only extends up to where I'm, I'm putting it. So you can be very, very precise with it. 
Um, it's not much use for it right now, but I'll pop it there anyway. But the reason why you might want to make the Overwatch cone shorter than you could is to increase the accuracy of your weapon when you fire. Shilania, thank you very much for the 14 months. The Ochen Vaurian. Right, I'm not going to press going forward in. any further. I think I'm going to more or less hold I'm this position, in. but I really want you to make some gr cover some ground now. Ah, it's risky though. Chat, how likely is this game going to be absolutely brutish and just? Haha! <laughs> you thought just because this was a tutorial that you were safe? I mean, I know that there's nothing down here at the very least, so I can move up there. I'll have cover to the areas that I haven't explored myself. Other than that, though. Receiving. Uh, whilst, yes, I overwatched the wall, understand that whilst it doesn't... Sh like, normally you can see exactly where they're going to shoot because, like, the, the brighter part of the cone shows where it intersects with the land and from that you can sort of see exactly where they're aiming but understand that the overwatch from high cover they can sidestep so by setting this up it's still possible for them to sidestep to take their shot and then step back it's a little bit less clear what they're overwatching at that point but it does still work or at least it used to there i am talking like i know what i'm talking about I hopefully do, but... I like safe. You're never safe. Back a little tip. Take cover. These hostiles are carrying firearms, so don't leave your soldiers in the open. Taking cover next to obscuring terrain will grant your operatives some protection from the bandit's fire. Uh, shooting lines. Lines drawn from the selected tile to the hostile unit indicate your shoulder can shoot the enemy from there. Blue lines indicate an operative has enough APs to move and shoot. Yellow indicate the soldier has line of sight, but not enough AP to attack. Okay, fair enough. Okay, not close enough for my uh, attack to trigger. Okay, was this... Right. Should we see what a big explosion looks like? I think we should. Drop that in there? No. We totally should see what this is like. And we should attack it from the side. But this might go wide. Either way, go. Enjoy. Ooh, different perspective and everything. Ah, I mean, didn't really achieve the, the stated goals, but good enough, I think. I can shoot from here, but not from there, sadly. I could move up, however, and then go into Overwatch to take a shot on the next turn. But let's first move you forward. Uh, I'm going to have to get in there in one turn. I'm going to just have to risk it for a biscuit, really. Okay, your squad has a new member. Omar is a heavy class, the soldier proficient in heavy weapons and armor. He can deal massive damage from short range and withstand attacks, making him the ideal frontline operative. Nice. Hey, Windy Forson, thank you very much for the 18 months. This reminds me of Mutant Year Zero. Yeah, actually, it does. It's good. That's a good comparison. It's over, chat. The bandit has the high ground. Shh, it's fine. We've, we've dealt with it. You can't do anything more. Can, oh, no weapon. Omar has heavy armor, but no weapon. The crate on top of the near... Ah, okay. Nearby tower might contain useful items. Move out of the building and use the jet jump to get to the... I seem to recall jet jump. Uh, is there a way for me to get outside and then jet jump up? Or no? Okay. Well, I... How much is it? Oh, it costs a lot of points. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that anytime soon. So. And I'm just going to guess that I can't do it from inside. Uh, heavy torso armor comes equipped with a jetpack, allowing soldiers to fly over obstacles and reach very high points. 
scroll up to move the camera, blah, blah, blah. The jet jump ability uses three AP. I Could I even get out there? That would have been funny if I could. Ooh, wait. I wonder. Is it possible to angle this? Oh. Is it possible to do this in one turn? Because I only have... I'm repositioning. Enough movement points. No, more or less go straight up. Okay, let's try and let's scooch forward then. Can we do it now? No. I am extremely sad. All right. Well, let's not just jump straight out. Let's stay somewhat secluded until I can get outside and, and do a jet jump on the next turn. All right, Eel. Um... And I'm going to move forward, and I'm going to let them come to me, rather than go to them. About there should be good. Uh, you can start moving forward too. Scarab is going to move back to try and lure the enemy out to me. Actually, I could possibly... <laughs> can my Scarab hide behind a car? Is this the equivalent of crouching behind a corpse? For us, trying to trying to hide from the enemy by by lying down amongst the the dead, covering yourself with a bit of dirt and blood. I think it might be. I approve, Scarab. Hey, Plumber Smack, thank you very much for the forty eight months, buddy. My turn. Hello, Bandit. Oh dear. Oh, well, that's interesting. Uh, right, if you move up, we should be able to take a shot. Not a very good one, though. We'll see. First, I want to find out about this jet jump. I'm repositioning. Right, can I get up there? No! Oh, it took two turns. Damn it! It took me two moves! Sod it all. Uh, all right, we'll get back behind the door then. But I'm going to have to be from here then next turn. All right, well, we'll take the shot. Well, we'll see about the other characters first. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to be an easy shot for me to take. I could flank. I'm not sure if that would really help, since I'm not going to get a clear sh shot on any of their extremities, but... More or less guaranteed to take this up. <laughs> Disabled arm. Right. Now we're going to see if my initial assumption is correct. I'm fairly certain that if you disable an arm, they can't use a two-handed weapon. Could be wrong, but... Uh, right. Well, given that, I can drop another missile on you. Oh, those things really do go wide. But I don't think they have any cover anymore, so... Perfect. Nice work. Two will points down. Yep, very nice work. Alright, end in turn. Reinforcement zones. Some battlefields feature reinforcement points. New enemies will be arriving from them, so don't leave your soldiers exposed. They really are missiles. Wow, really, chat? You just do that? Yeah, I can only assume that they ran away because they can't shoot. Glorious. Alright, let's get out there. Finally use this ability. There we go. Uh, I don't like I how exposed I'm going to be, but all right. I can't pick anything up. Extremely sad. Um. How many missiles have I got? Four of eight. I'm going to assume that I can't reload. So let's just I'm on the move. march forward, see what we can do first. 
Okay, I don't have sight on them from this position. I should check that before I charged forward. That's my on me. You could move to the side and I could move back. No. I can move to the side, but I can't move back. That's annoying. 